If you use Facebook, you're probably sick of those stupid personality questionnaires popping into your feed every few days and the excited responses from your friends. Which celebrity are you most suited to marry? Which superhero do you most resemble? Which type of animal most mirrors your beautiful inner self? Well, here's my own questionnaire to help you work out where you are on the what on earth do I believe scale. First, are you a theist? There is a God. Maybe he speaks to us, maybe he doesn't, but he's definitely there somewhere. Or are you an atheist? You simply don't believe in the existence of God, full stop. Are you an agnostic? Maybe there's a God, maybe there isn't, but I'm not sure we'll ever find out this side of heaven. Or are you a somethingist? I think there must be something out there, but I haven't a clue what he, she or it really is, and I'm not convinced it makes any difference to me anyway. Or are you a too busy and too tired to think about it ist? Okay, maybe these questions are important, but I just don't have the energy to get into them at the moment. I'm too busy with deadlines and demands. Life gets in the way. I'm just exhausted. Now, this is just a bit of fun, but there is a serious point as well. There are so many different beliefs and non-beliefs and half-beliefs, and that's even before we get into the differences between all the religions. There are so many different reasons for people not to believe in God. And I don't just mean the deep reasons that philosophers give, although they're important and interesting. I mean the real reasons that lead people often to give up on the search for God. Sometimes it's the whole science versus religion thing, as if modern science can answer every deep human question, as if there's some kind of conflict between using your brain and believing in God. Sometimes we grow up in a family or a culture where people don't take these questions seriously. If everyone around you is indifferent to religious questions or even hostile, it takes a lot of courage to explore them. We might be afraid of not fitting in. People might think we're weird. Sometimes our images of God are so strange that it becomes almost impossible to take him seriously. If I think that God is like an old man with a beard sitting up in the cloud like Santa Claus, or an angry tyrant trying to catch me out every time I break the rules, then of course I will look elsewhere to try and find something that will give my life meaning. And in my work as a priest, I've found that there are two very common situations that often lead people to lose their faith in God or in religion. One is the experience of suffering how can I believe in a loving God when there is so much suffering in the world? Or when I'm going through some struggle or some tragedy that seems to have no meaning? The other is the bad example of believers. Some people have had such terrible experiences of religious people. How could I possibly join this community when it seems to be full of such hypocrites? when it's done so much harm in human history and when it still seems to be doing such harm today. There are so many good reasons to doubt the existence of God and to resist the idea of religion, genuine reasons. The problem is, even if you acknowledge these reasons, the religious questions remain. Where does everything come from? What is the meaning of my life? Why do we suffer? Is the life after death? Is there a God? Now you can criticize the bad answers, and indeed you should, but it's hard to criticize the questions themselves. I think they're universal and they won't go away. And part of the challenge is simply acknowledging their importance and being willing to explore some answers.